All right, today we're talking about travel light stands, not ones you use in a studio that are really big and sturdy and heavy, but travel light stands. These are the smallest, most lightweight, compact, but hopefully they can hold something light stands when you're traveling on vacation or out in the world. When I travel, I usually always hand hold my camera so I don't need a tripod. What I need is light stands to hold up the lights. And I usually take about five of them with me on a typical trip. So this is more important to me than tripods. Light stands are are taller, lighter, and cost less than tripods. Tripods are sturdier and can hold more weight. Now the problem with a light stand is most of the stand is actually just the center column and the thing that actually supports it is way down here. So that's what makes these things wobbly. The most important thing for me on a light stand deciding which one to take is not just what's the most lightweight because I'm traveling, but which one's the sturdiest. And obviously how small it compacts down to is important and the price really doesn't matter that much to me. The most important thing is I want the most lightweight thing that can support a heavy weight. So it comes down to what you're using. Are you using a speed light or an AD200? These are really lightweight or AD300. Or are you using a 400 or a big giant heavy 600? And it also depends what you're putting on the thing. I mean, are you using a modifier, a big soft box, or are you just using a little reflector like this? When you put something like this on a light stand, the center of gravity is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty centered. The problem is when you have a big giant soft box on the front of it, then it starts to pull the weight to one side. And a lot of times these cheaper ones, slowly the thing starts to go down on you. But really the final issue for me is when I'm on location, you always have to secure the light stand with a weight so it doesn't blow over in the wind. You'll notice these ones here, the legs go out more. The first thing I do most commonly to hold a light stand in place, and I do this in almost every location I go, is I take a rock and I put it on the leg. This one I can easily do that with. It's not going anywhere. Something like this or this. This, I can't put a rock on this. This is too high of an angle to put a rock on. And if I lower the angle, this isn't as sturdy. So let's just get right to it. Let's get onto these light stands here. Let's start with this one here. The one that I have been using the most for all these years that I find is the best, and I'm constantly seeing if there's anything better, is Impact. These are very, very lightweight. They're aluminum and they're really cheap. So the first one on the list here is actually the cheapest one on the list and it's one of the most dependable. And that is the six foot Impact LS6. It weighs 1.7 pounds, really, really lightweight. 71 inches, which is six feet. This is actually pretty good for an AD600. It's only $20. This is the cheapest light stand of the whole bunch. The Impact LS6, a good basic one to have. The only thing about this one is when it collapses, it's 26 inches, which is long. This is actually pretty long for a six foot light sand to be collapsed. That's the only problem about this. It's not the weight, it's not the cost, it's not the sturdiness, it's just long. Another thing that factors in how sturdy something is, is this right here. This is basic engineering. The distance from here to here is what makes a light stand not wobbly. So this one you can tell right away is not going to wobble as much as this one. See now here I just increased the, uh, the distance from here to here. But look at the, the feet. I don't like these ones that collapse upwards like this for that reason. They are not as stable because when you get them in a position for a light stand, you know, the distance from here to here is very, very small. That's why these impacts are so good. This is a really cheap one. This is by Emart. <laughs> You can get two of these for 40 bucks. By itself, if you only buy one, it's 30 bucks. This is 1.8 pounds, really lightweight, 825 grams, 75 inches, collapsed, it's 27 inches. Now we're back to that again. This is really cheap, <laughs> it's really lightweight. Anybody can afford one of these. The problem is it's not as strong as the impact. It won't hold an 8600. These knobs that tighten it, they can't hold the weight of a 600. This thing will start going when you put something heavy on it. It will hold a 200 or a 300, but not a 400 or a 600. If you want something cheap and you have lightweight stuff, speed lights, 200s, this is more than good enough for you. All right, next up on the list, this is one of my favorites of the new ones that just came out. This is the Ulanzi MT49. It's carbon fiber, really, really lightweight, 1.7 pounds. Believe it or not, it's the same weight as the Impact aluminum six foot. Same height, this is carbon fiber, this is aluminum, they weigh exactly the same. The Ulanzi is actually a tiny bit higher up and the reason the Ulanzi is a little bit wobblier than the Impact is again because of the base. 
Notice the distance from here to here is bigger on the impact. The Ulanzi doesn't have a lot of, the distance here is very, very small, so it's not, but it will definitely hold an AD600. It'll be a little wobbly, but it'll hold it. This is carbon fiber, and these feet here are at a wide enough angle to where you can put a rock on there. Just be careful not to snap it. Don't put like too heavy a rock on there. You can put a string or a weight to hold it down from the middle. I already did a video on how to secure light sand. The only thing that you gotta watch out for is if you put a soft box like this on there, that's gonna start pushing it too much. What you wanna have is a soft box where the center of gravity is in the same middle as the actual light and the light stand. Like this 120 centimeter Godox umbrella soft. I can put a, I mean, the diffuser goes over the front. The center of gravity is still the post. It's not off-centered. And this doesn't weigh much at all. The other thing about soft boxes is they're wind traps. There's always gonna be some wind that's gonna blow it. You need something that isn't gonna flex too much. The main reason to get the Yolanzi is weight. It's lightweight and it collapses down to 18.5 inches. So this is pretty small for a light sand, it goes above six feet. It's really, really lightweight. It's the second most compact one out of all of these, and it's not that expensive, $68. Yulanzi MT49. This is a ProMaster LSCT. This one is probably the best one out of, in many categories. It weighs 2.7 pounds, 1.2 kilograms, so it's not the lightest of the bunch, but it's still pretty lightweight. When the feet are this angle, which is kind of dramatically steep, it goes up to 6.5 feet. It's not as stable, and you can't put anything on the feet. But when you go like this with the legs, one little change of angle with the legs, now it becomes the most stable light stand of the entire bunch. Even though it doesn't have that connector, out of all the light stands I'm showing you today, the ProMaster LICT is the most stable and it's strong. This thing can definitely hold an AD600. This thing can probably hold anything you put on it. So this actually works as a tripod too. This is really, really good for an all-purpose light stand tripod. I use this to hold giant reflectors out in the desert. Because the feet are at a nice wide angle, I can put heavy rocks on here and each leg can be set to a different position and length, making this really versatile. And it's not that expensive. It's only 80 $5. And the other cool thing about this is when it collapses, it becomes the shortest of the whole bunch. <laughs> Look at how wide and heavy duty this thing is. This is not little flimsy tiny feet. This is big heavy duty feet. It collapses down to the shortest of all of these. This is 16 inches. The only thing is it's wider. It's wider than some of the other ones, but it's the most stable. It collapses the shortest, but when the feet are wide, it's only six feet. When the feet are narrower, it's six and a half feet. So it's this, this still works. I think six feet is the very limit of what a light sand should be as far as minimum weight. So this is the ProMaster LSCT. Moving on to this one here. I came across this one on the Adorama site. This is a Flashpoint Nano Runner. Really, really lightweight. 1.4 pounds, carbon fiber, 649 grams, 81 inches high. That's pretty darn high up. Collapsed, it's 19 inches. The profile here is very, very slim. So this doesn't take up much space at all. It weighs very little. <laughs> 1.4 pounds at 649 grams. This is really, really lightweight. It's just not that strong. This to me, from what I've found with my testing, is the last acceptable one that you can use with an AD600. It's going to wobble, but it'll hold it though. It'll hold an AD600. This is more for an AD200 or $300. $80 is the cost. So this is the last one for using an AD600. And, but it's got a good height. It's really lightweight. It's real fun to use. Not many people know about this one. Um, so this is a Flashpoint Nano Runner. Now we get into Nissan. Nissan is a brand that I found out about from Robert Hall. Uh, he seems to like this one here. So I started experimenting with them. Uh, they're really lightweight. They're just wobbly as hell and they're very expensive. If you put a little too much weight on it, watch what the legs are doing. See how they're spreading out? Look at that. That's the last thing you want. It's like, look at how feet are spreading out. Even if it was flat and you put weight on here, it still wobbles quite a bit. The only thing about this one is, I mean, it's really lightweight, is it's $170. That's the thing about Nissans, they're really, really expensive. All right, so this is the LS55C, $170. Not my uh, first choice. Now this one is the 50. That last one was the 55, this is the 50. So I think this is an earlier model. But this one is actually better 
than the other one. And it kind of confuses me as to why, because if you look at the base here, see how there's two supports for each leg? You'd think that one would be more stable than this, which only has one support. This is really flimsy looking. See how the foot is actually a very thin piece of metal with holes in it, and it's only got one support. This one has a round carbon fiber leg, which stability-wise would seems to be more stable, and it's got two supports. So you'd think this one would be more stable than this one, but it's not. This one's actually a lot wobblier than this one. This one is incredibly stable. This one is actually the most favorite Nissan of all the ones, including this big heavy one here. I like this one more. This is actually more stable then this one, this is the wobbliest one of the whole bunch, the nine footer. And it's really, really lightweight, my God. This is like, look at this. Balancing it on my little finger. Really, really small profile, really lightweight. Almost the same structurally as the Flashpoint. Look at that, it's got the thin legs with the holes in it. It's the same profile, same everything. The Flashpoint is $80, this one is $170. Now you're gonna say, well, I'm definitely going for the Flashpoint. No, because this one is actually a little wobblier than this one. This is actually a little lighter. This is only 1.2 pounds, 561 grams. This is the most lightweight out of all the ones I'm showing you today. It's the most lightweight, one of the most compact, and it's actually a little sturdier than the Flashpoint here. This is definitely good for the AD200. Let's do some stuff with it real quick. Look how tall this thing is. Really high up there, so it definitely gives you enough height. If you don't need the full seven feet, go in at least one third there, one third there, one third there, and you've got a much stronger center column. This one here is a really good portable softbox for the AD200 and it's not very off-centered with weight. For a little light stand like this, I would avoid something like this. Now this is really lightweight. I made a video about the most lightweight uh, modifiers for an AD200. I mean if you're indoors fine, but if, <laughs> if there's wind I would not trust this. So here's another example of a good center of gravity softbox. This is an 80 centimeter, which is actually pretty good size for the AD200. It weighs nothing. It's not gonna put any strain on this uh, little lightweight light stand. It doesn't cost much. I did a video about all these. So this is one that I recommend for, if you're gonna use a pretty decent modifier. And lastly, another one of my favorite tiny little portable modifiers for an AD200 is this collapsible reflector umbrella from Westcott. It doesn't weigh much. It's very portable. Most of these light stands I'm showing you today can definitely handle umbrellas. The only thing is it's a sail so if the wind catches it you really have to secure the feet or have strings, uh, ropes, paracords, whatever you want to call it you know, tying it down to rocks or stakes in the ground. It can hold a 300 too, but beyond that, I would not use a 400 or a 600. All right, so this is the Nissan LS50C Carbon Fiber Super Light Stand. It's $170, I know that sounds like a lot, but like I said, this is the most light, if lightweight is the most important thing for you, this is the most lightweight. And it collapses down to something really small, 19 inches, very low profile. I like this one so much, I ordered another one. I really, really like it. Another thing about this one is, which is kind of cool, nice little plus, notice this lever here? You can loosen this one leg and change the angle of the leg so it's steeper or wider. This thing can adjust for uneven ground. That's really cool. The 55 doesn't have that. So that's another cool feature about this one here. All right, now we're up to this one here, the Manfrotto. More stable than any of the Nissans. It seems like the metal, even though it's just a thin metal thing with holes in it, is more stable than the round carbon fiber legs at the bottom. This one also has an adjustable foot that you can extend. So it has a variable leg. Very lightweight, 1.7 pounds, which is 783 grams. Seven feet tall, nice height. Collapses down to 19 and a half inches, which is longer than the Nissan LS50C. Not much, maybe two inches. It's a little wider, a little longer, but this is more stable than this one. But this is $156. Actually, this is $170. This is 100. So this costs less than this one. What is that? Like 15 bucks? Don't let the 15 bucks make your decision for you. This is more lighter and smaller. This is a little more stable. Not like super much stable, but uh, this is the Manfrotto Carbon Nano Pole, $156. I'm going to get to this one in a second. Let's get to this one here first. 
This is the, the big nine foot Nissan. Look at how tall this is. You probably can't even see the top of this thing. Really, really lightweight. I mean, this is pretty amazing how lightweight this thing is. This thing wobbles the most out of all of them, <laughs> believe it or not. And again, look, look at the base. See how there's very little, these support rods, do not go up to here. I don't like things that collapse upwards like this. They don't give you a lot of stability. This is not a good base for stability. If you're not gonna use nine feet, what I suggest you do is you, you go down one third, one third, and one third. Now it's more stable. Now, but still, it's all the wobble is right here. This joint right here is where it wobbles. It's not the flexibility of the support column. It's, it's right here, it's this area here that makes the wobbles. I don't like this one, it's, I'm gonna give these away. This is the one. This is the one that I've been using the most for the last 10 years on most of my trips. The first one I showed you was a six footer, this is an eight footer, and sometimes I take 10 footers if it's a really serious trip. Here's some example of me using the 10 footers, extended all the way up. They're holding AD 600s and they're wobbling in the wind, but they never snapped, they never broke, they never fell. I put heavy weights on the bottom and they held up. The reason I use the 10 footers a lot of times is not because I need the 10 feet, it's because the legs are, these feet are wider, they go out to here, which gives me more stability and more you know thing to put a, a, a rock on but the eight foot is a good medium between the six foot and the ten foot this is the best all-around light stand that I would suggest if you can take the length it weighs 2.2 pounds really lightweight it's aluminum it's not carbon fiber sometimes I like aluminum more than carbon fiber it doesn't flex as much and this is just as lightweight as the other ones um, 978 grams, it's only $33. Really, really cheap. As a matter of fact, that really cheesy, cheap E-Mart, this is $30 for one, this is $33. This is six feet, this is eight feet. Nothing beats impact for cost and stability. This is the second most stable one next to the LSCT by Promaster. Look at the thickness of the feet on this thing. This thing is the most stable, this is the second most stable. This only goes up to six feet. This goes up to eight feet. This is what it's like when it's collapsed. It weighs a little bit more than this one here. And this brings me to the one thing I don't like about these. This is 29 inches. This is as long as you can possibly go in a suitcase diagonally. One is okay, but remember I take four or five light stands, so that becomes a real hassle. It's annoying to put in a suitcase. This one, it's wider, but it's shorter. These are the two that I suggest the most. If you want stability, you don't want to pay a lot of money. Promaster LSCT and the Impact LS8. If you want to use a big heavy AD600 and a big giant modifier, this will definitely hand it. Because this is what I've been using all these years on all my photo shoots is either an Impact LS8 or an LS10. The feet are nice and shallow so you can put a weight on there. Easily put a rock on here and this will definitely hold it. I put one on each foot. That's my main way of holding something down. Almost every place I've ever gone has been rocks or something heavy to put on there. If you're using big modifiers, big heavy lights, this will definitely work, and so will the Promaster LSCT. And for your educational pleasure, I categorize them into charts. Here are the sizes when collapsed. Here they are categorized by maximum height fully extended, tallest ones being on the left. Here they are by weight, the most lightweight ones starting on the left. Just pause the video if you want to see this longer. Here they are by sturdiness, the most sturdy ones on the left. By price, the cheapest ones on the left. And which ones can hold up a heavier AD 400 or 600. Semi-okay, better and best. So in summary, the sturdiest of all is the Promaster LSCT and the Impact LS8. This is the shortest one. This is the longest one when it's collapsed. Eight feet tall. This is still the best for all around use. It's the tallest of the good ones. It holds an AD600, it's very cheap, it's only $33. It has a good base bracket here. The only thing is it barely fits in a suitcase. The Ulanzi MT49 is also a good all around, pretty sturdy. After the LSCT, it's one of the shortest ones. 18.5 inches, six feet tall. So it's very comparable to the Manfrotto. These are good for AD 200s. The cheapest one of the bunch is the LS6, the six footer. This is the LS8, $33. This is the LS6, $20. This is the cheapest one. This is really cheap too. This, both of these will hold a, a AD 600. The nine foot Nissan LS65C carbon fiber. I don't like it. 
It costs a lot of money, but I'm going to give it away. I actually have three of these things. I thought I was going to use them, but they're too flimsy for me. I have other things to give away too. I have a whole bunch of tripods I'm giving away. I'm going to make a private video that I'm going to send you to that will just mention all the giveaway stuff. I'm just going to put a link down below. Just go to that for the giveaway stuff. This is mainly about the light stands. So without rambling any further, I will now end this video. You can go back to your life and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a good week and stay out of trouble. Okay, bye.